Episode 2 of The Penguin's out on Max now, and I had a chance to check it out. And I have to say, I enjoyed this one even more than the first. I don't think the show is hitting like amazing highs right now, it's not a Breaking Bad by any means. But it is a well-made show, and I am finding myself getting more on board as it progresses. So I want to dive in about what worked and didn't for episode 2 of The Penguin. There's going to be spoilers, so, you know, waddle along if you want. Otherwise, maybe check out the episode and come back. Let's begin. <laughs> Before I start, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that subscribe button really quick and the notification bell, I review movies every week. I'll be talking about Joker Folie à deux tomorrow on the channel after I see it, so you might want to stick around for that, it should be fun. I'm hearing great things about it so far. Alright, what we have here is two different storylines now taking shape. Sophia Falcone was introduced briefly in the first episode, she's going to be a lot more front and center in the second one. And I'm cool with that, I like this actress, Sophia's an interesting character, fresh out of Arkham Asylum. We see that she's still very much trapped there in her head, as this episode starts up with her meeting with her shrink. He ends up calming her down, telling her this is a safe space, but I felt like he was kind of giving her the eyes, like, are we gonna make out now? It was a little odd, she certainly seemed a bit standoffish, mainly because here's the facts, she's not safe, she's home. Meanwhile, Oz is back with the Moroni family, trying to once again make something work with this guy. He's already rocking the ring that Penguin gave him. Oz said, hey, why don't you take this as a souvenir, a trophy for not actually killing Falcone's son, but you know, I'm pretending you did, I'm framing you for that murder, and I'm sure there's gonna be a massive family rivalry and killing spree that's gonna take place at some point in the future. But right now, we're just getting little nips, little scratches at it. The big play right now is Oz is trying to convince the Moronis to take down a big shipment. They're hauling some drugs to a different location. As you know, short for location. This is Oz's crew, so he knows exactly what's going to happen and when. And he wants them to hit the payload, take the drugs for themselves, and then they can sell the merchandise. This doesn't quite go off without a hitch. The dude from House of Cards, remember that chestnut? Says that Oz, Penguin, has to oversee this drop personally. He needs to be in the front vehicle with the shipment in case anything goes awry. The dude doesn't trust Oz and that's fair. I mean, the guy's super sketchy at best. And shit hits the fan, of course, because they're knocking off this vehicle. There's an action sequence. It's fine. It's not up to the standards of a movie, but uh, for a TV series, very competently done. Even Penguin gets into the mix, killing some of his own dudes to save face. The Falcone family's not convinced that Oz had nothing to do with this. There's clearly a snitch in the family. Sophia points this out very early on. She's got a nose for these things. She already doesn't trust the Penguin, beating the living shit out of him in the previous episode. And so here he's public enemy number one. But not for long, because he's going to find a way to pin it on someone else. Colin Farrell is so good in this role, the guy can talk himself out of any situation. Penguin, realizing he doesn't really have a play with the higher-ups inside of the family, he's going to turn to the one remaining family member left, and hope to get on her good side. And that's going to be Sophia, who again, just beat the shit out of him in the previous episode, so she's not keen on anything he's selling. But as this story unfolds in just episode two, he's gonna win her over. After the successful drug heist, Sophia decides, I gotta do some digging on my own. So she hires a private investigator, a detective of sorts. Uh, a detective is a loose term. This guy is rough and tumble. But he ends up finding someone that survived the shootout, He's borderline dead, but he's being kept alive somehow. He brings him to Sophia. She puts him down in the basement while the funeral's happening for her brother upstairs. And they're going to interrogate this guy as soon as he comes to. Penguin catches whiff of what's going on. And so he's going to spring into action to try to stop this from happening. Because if this guy talks, the penguin's dead. Oz is going to once again elicit his bagman, his driver, his patsy, his whatever, his right-hand guy that he for some reason has affection for. He can see a part of him inside of Victor's eyes or something. 
So he's gonna have Vic come along on this road trip. They're gonna head to the funeral. Vic is supposed to place a bunch of diamonds that Sophia is aware of in Vidi's car. That's the guy from House of Cards. Because, uh, listen, the guy doesn't like Penguin already, so might as well kill two birds with one stone. Get him out of the equation. Frame him as the rat. It takes the scent off of his trail. Unfortunately, Vic screws the pooch. He's unable to successfully do this, so he flees while a bunch of security chases after him. Can't find him. The kid's fast. He's flighty on his feet. That's a good thing, because the penguin can't run worse shit. The dude waddles everywhere. Like a penguin... Oh, that's why he's called that. Oh, that's fun. I, I knew that already, just joking. But anyway, Penguin moves his way through the house. He finds out they're keeping this informant downstairs on life support. His goal was to convince this guy to roll over on another player, but it doesn't matter anymore because Vic screwed up, so Penguin has to just straight up kill the guy. He takes out a knife, stabs him in the stomach. It's pretty gross and a little over the top, blood everywhere. The guy gurgles out, dies. Penguin heads back upstairs, cleans off the knife, puts it in his pocket, but then he's immediately grabbed by the other security and they're going to go person to person to figure out who the rat is because they know a body's now dead downstairs. They know the drugs have been taken. Who the fuck is doing this? Who's the rat? Since the diamonds are no longer on the table, he can't really frame Vidi with any confidence. So, as he's being searched, he tussles with Vidi, acting like they're in a big fight right now, pulls out his knife quick, slips it into the pocket of Sophia's right-hand man. Castillo? Castillo? Castetto. Sophia, without hesitating, without questioning, knows this asshole is the rat. She demands a gun. Put a gun in my hand so I can kill this guy and avenge my brother. He killed my brother. He's trying to take our family down from the inside. Give me a Shot is fired, but it's not from her. No, the bullet rings out from Luca's gun. Luca is the current head of the family, and Sophia might think that she belongs there since she's blood, but Luca is very much asserting his dominance here, and he's not going to let this woman take over. In fact, he's been trying to push her out of the family, get her away. I'm sure he would hand deliver her with a bow and all back to Arkham if he could. But for the time being, he has to just make sure she can play ball at least. But in actuality, he just pissed her off more. Now she's ready to, as Oz would say, dance. He gave a little monologue earlier about how uh, he and his mom used to go out and dance. It's how he kind of brought her back to life for a while. They had many great years together. Unfortunately, she passed. And that was like half bullshit because his mom's still alive and we did get another boring dance scene. And I'm sure that in no way, shape, or form is going to come back and bite him in the ass later. He's lying about everything to Sophia. This is playing out kind of like Dexter. If you remember that show, he would lie to everyone he was working with. His colleagues actually started to really like him a lot. And we never really get a satisfying conclusion to that multiple season arc. Just completely shit the bed on it. But anyway, hopefully this will actually have some resolution and it'll be satisfying. Because there's nothing worse than watching a douchebag get away with things over and over again for there to be no payoff. But this episode did pay off. We end this with Sophia and Oz teaming up, joining forces to take out Luca and rise to the top. This was a strong episode. I think it worked better than the first one even. We got some action in there. We got some good dialogue. We had some interesting scenarios play out where Penguin has to constantly think on his feet and he berates Vic about this. He says, listen, dude, there's a point where he throws the kid in a grave and he says, lay down next to these dead bodies that we're burying because you belong here. If you can't run with me, then you are useless to me and you should just lie down and die. But he gives him yet another opportunity. This is one of the few sparks of human emotion that the Penguin shows between his mother and this kid, his protege. Outside of that, he's scum. So it's good to have a little bit of humanity left for him. Otherwise, there's really nothing there for you to appreciate. Anyway, I enjoyed this episode. I'm excited for number three. If you had thoughts, I want to hear them in the comments below. Are you watching the show? Are you enjoying it? Or are you just living through me on these recaps? I want to know, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, notification bell, all that crap, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. Take care.